Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Patriots Review, the one time per week where I allow my biased self to be critical of the Patriots. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, you know, to be honest, I, I'm pretty disappointed in the offense yesterday. I mean, that first half was terrible. We tried to run the ball most of the time, and they figured us out. We had only played two games prior, and teams are already figuring out Super Cam. They're already figuring out that if you can contain Cam Newton, and you can contain our run game, then we can't do anything. Two weeks. Two games, and teams have already figured that out. And, not, and I'm not blaming any of the players... You know, I'm I'm blaming Josh McDaniels more so than anyone else. Just just because we need a more creative playbook. We were we're getting so predictable right now. It's just like last year, uh, except only difference was Brady was throwing the ball half the time, and giving it to to Julian Edelman most of the time. This year, it's mostly run plays. You know, Cam either hands it off to one of the running backs, or he fakes a handoff and runs it himself. And maybe there is an occasional play action or a screen. Last week, there was such an improvement with the passing game. And this week, they acted like it wasn't even there. You're allowed to pass the ball, guys. And you know, if they had thrown it more in the first half, I think we could have done a lot better. And we really need to start throwing the ball more during the game. I mean, sure, sure, use the running game as a starting point. Let it build a foundation, but don't turn it into the only option. It's why we lost this. It's why we failed to score that last touchdown against Seattle. And it's why we struggled so much in the first half. Now, thankfully, the second half, the running game got going. And they, and they were able to just move the ball down the field. Oh my gosh, Rex Burkhead. I did not expect him to have the game that he had. It makes me wish I had started... It makes me wish I had picked him up in free agency on fantasy. Because then I wouldn't be... Because then I wouldn't have allowed so many freaking points. Freaking guy starts Alvin Kamara. He puts up almost 50 points. And I go from up 30 to down 20. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. My point, my point being, the running game got a lot better. I freaking love Sony Michelle, and I love that he was able to look like his old his, him, his old self for a couple of plays, and hopefully that continues. Cam even had one good run, but otherwise he was just contained. Speaking of which, now I just remembered that one third and long play. Oh my gosh, it's third and long. You're not that far away from the end zone, and you have. And they've been stopping the run game a lot, and containing Cam especially. And you decide to to have Cam run it through the middle. Yeah, remember that turned out? He made it to the line of scrimmage and then slid down because it was crowded in the middle. Couldn't have at least tried to run to the outside or maybe had a check down option somewhere. I mean, third and long, that should be a pass. That should be a passing play. Maybe the quarterback scrambles if he has the opportunity to. But don't make that the first choice. My point being, this offense, it's good. It's better than it's showing. Well, the, this offense can be better than what it's looking like right now. But, but it all comes down to the play calling. We need a more creative offensive playbook. That's all I'm going to say to that. Now that defense, the first half, they couldn't do anything. 
they couldn't stop anything, anyway. I mean, yes, I know, Josh Jacobs is good. I won't deny that. But, seriously, you can't stop their running game at all? Why hasn't this defense been able to stop the running game for the past three seasons now? Including this one. Seriously. And the secondary? I still think we have the best secondary in the league, but they didn't look like it in that first half. They just let they just let Derek Carr throw the ball to whoever he he wanted. Quick plays, boom, boom, boom. First down, first down, first down, march on the field. I'm su- I'm surprised we didn't allow <clears throat> A couple touchdowns in the first half. Granted, one of those was a fumble that we secured. Anyway, uh, but seriously, you guys have to stop the run. In fact, you you can't just let the other team's offense march down the field all they want. You just can't. You have. All right. Uh, with the defensive line. You have to push through the offense, their offensive line fast and get and pressure the quarterback. You can't sit there all day and let and and even if you are getting there quickly, you just can't. Well, you got to get there as quickly as you can. I now I understand that's easier said than done. I understand that, but you got to work on breaking through their O line and getting to and giving the quarterback little to no options. You know, force him to run outside the pocket. Force him, or better yet, keep him in the pocket, actually. Mobile quarterbacks are bad for us. Uh, anyway. But seriously, just don't let the quarterback do what he wants. You know, force him to make a big mistake. Force him to throw it away. Now, thankfully, in the second half, they started to do better. And, and I mean, three fumbles, three forced fumbles, oh my gosh, and one of those, one of those, man, right in the end zone, I thought it was a safety at first, and then I'm hearing possible fumble, either way, we get points, and for it to turn into a, a, a defensive touchdown, I was very happy about that. And to hear that, two, and to see that two of those fumbles, uh, Chase Winovich was well had played a a good part in both of in two of those fumbles. I like Chase Winovich. I knew he could be a future face of this defense, and he's playing like it. Albeit a little, he's a albeit he's working his way up slowly, but. He's still he's still making plays. <laughs> now that special teams play, for the most part, I feel like they did all right, good as usual. But Nick Folk, I said Folk this time, <laughs> not making that same mistake three weeks in a row. Uh, you know, I don't even care about the fact that he made his field goals. I'm still going to bitch about him. He's still a terrible kicker. I mean, remember that extra point he missed? It was an extra point. Alright, it's been how many seasons since they pushed it back? To the 15-yard line? Let's see here, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That was five years ago that they, that they pushed the extra point back. And your kicker has been in the league for how long? I mean, you you can't be missing extra points. Now, granted, if you were a better kicker, I wouldn't be giving them as much crap about it because it is a little it is a lot harder than the 2-yard line, but I'm going to bitch about Nick Folk anyway. Because he's a terrible kicker, and I'd rather have Justin Rohrwasher, because he's a rookie, and at least I can defend him and say that he'll get better over time. But Nick Foles, he's terrible. 
I want him gone. I really want Nick Folk out of here. I I don't even care if we get a kid, someone worse than him. I want someone younger. Someone in like their first or second year. Even if they're worse, at least I can defend a younger kicker who's who hasn't well who's just who can get better. But Nick Folk, he's not gonna get better. He is getting progressively worse as the weeks come. He's he's missing one kick every game. The first two weeks he missed a field goal. This week, he missed an extra point. My point being F. Nick Folk. Now for the overall grade. You know, since this was a tale of two halves, kinda, I'm gonna start with my first half grade by giving them a first half grade of 73 overall. They weren't doing anything right for, for a large portion of the first half. Although I will grant them an extra point or two for the two fumbles that they forced and recovered. So I'll bump so because the defense stepped up for those two plays, I'll bump it up to a seventy five. And then the second half the running game got a lot better. So I'll bump that up to a to a seventy seven point five. The defense forced another fumble. And a touchdown. So, let's say 79. To, yeah, 79. And honestly, I think that's good right there. My final grade for this team in week three. A 79. They could have done a lot better than they did. And... Oh my gosh, we're playing Kansas City next week, that's right. Well, maybe they'll step up. Because honestly, if we want to... If we want to play well against good teams like Kansas City... Offensively, the play calling needs to be better. It needs to be more creative. Kansas City had an amazing run defense last year, and they don't look like they're slowing down anytime soon. So we need to be more creative in the passing game. And defensively, uh, well, it's Patrick Mahomes. Alongside Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill, Robinson... I forget his first name. And their and his new favorite weapon, Clyde Edwards Alaire at running back. Yeah. We're gonna really have to step it up next week. If you want if you wanna get to an eighty. If you want if you want a better grade, Pats, get more creative offensively and show me that you can contend with Kansas City. Uh, anyway, if you like this video, uh, give it a like, share it with everyone you can, and if you want to see more content from this channel, hit that subscribe button below, and I'll see you next time.